When I was a kid, Super Mario Bros. the movie was one of my all-time favorite films. But as I grew up, everybody started to tell me, Super Mario Bros. the movie is the worst film ever made in the history of the video game mediums. It does everything wrong. It's got a bad story, bad acting, bad special effects. Everything about it is the complete opposite of good. It is the worst film ever made in the history of the medium of movies. It's complete and total shit. Exactly like that. And that sucks. Because I think that this movie has been greatly overlooked. Because a lot of people just think it's crap for no other reason than they just think it's crap. But today, I'm gonna prove to you that this movie is worth watching because it's a really fun film. So, today, we're gonna be looking at Super Mario Bros. the movie. Let's find the positives. Super Mario Bros. the movie, for those of you that don't know, is based off the Nintendo video game Super Mario Bros. that was released for the NES in 1985. This here is my copy, and although I've played it about a million times, there's one thing that people don't seem to really acknowledge about the original game. For one, this little cartridge has amazing gameplay, but it doesn't have that good of a story. And the movie? Well, it tried to fix that. The plot of the movie focuses on Mario and Luigi, two Italian plumbers in Brooklyn, New York. Luigi randomly meets an orphan named Daisy, who reveals herself to be an archaeologist that has been digging for dinosaur bones in an industrial job site that has recently been put on hold ever since the discovery of the bones. Daisy, wishing to show Luigi what she's been doing, takes him to the dig site only to discover two hired goons have sabotaged some water pipes flooding the whole operation. With Mario's help, they attempt to fix the pipes when Daisy is snatched away to a hidden part of the dig site that is revealed to be a portal to another dimension. Here in this other world, Daisy discovers her hidden lineage and the evil King Koopa, who Mario and Luigi must save her from. People that went to go watch this movie when it first came out were fans of the video game, so when they went to go see the movie, they were kind of upset that the movie didn't really seem like it had a lot to do with the actual game. And then on top of that, a lot of people really criticized the casting choices. But let's talk about that a little bit more, because I think the cast on this movie is really, really good. The movie stars Bob Hoskins as Super Mario and John Leguizamo as Luigi. Bob Hoskins is a fantastic actor, having performed in Shakespearean plays and some really dramatic films that had come out in the 80s. He is a very underrated actor and amazing in all the roles that he's ever been given. And he really sets Super Mario Brothers. Because to be honest, when I think of Super Mario, I think of Bob Hoskins. And Luigi's performance is actually really good as well. These two actors coming together have a very good chemistry and they feel like they've lived together for their whole lives, which is exactly the kind of performance you want from these two characters. I don't think that Mario and Luigi's casting were why people really didn't like the casting calls in the movie. I think it really comes down to the fact that Dennis Hopper is King Koopa. Now I'll give you that, it's a weird choice, but you have to look at it from the time that this movie was made. Everybody wanted King Koopa to be some kind of animated dinosaur or some kind of dude in a suit, and I don't think that would have worked. We needed a performance that was played well by somebody that had a really good background in acting. And Dennis Hopper? Well, he chose the scenes in this movie, and I think that's exactly why his performance works. He is a villain, and a good villain at that. He's funny, he's scary, he does everything that a villain is supposed to do, and then more. He really is a good choice for the role, and I believe, personally, that his casting was a good idea. The first positive is that this movie has great performances from a great cast. This movie could be hated on for a number of reasons, but the score is amazing. Alan Silvestri composed the entire score for this movie, and if you don't know who he is, he's the guy that did the score to Back to the Future. His ability to compose dramatic music at certain scenes of the film really sets this movie apart from other movies that were released that were based off of video games. There are dramatic scenes in this film that actually feel pretty sad, simply because Alan Silvestri's music really fits the mood of the scene. Now, take a look at this scene from the movie, and I think you might agree with me that they did a pretty good job with the score.
This scene sets a very sad tone. Coupled with the performances by the actors involved and the score, it really drives home a great feeling of emotion that you just don't get from the video game, to be honest, or from somebody that really didn't care about the score at all. So the second positive is that this movie has a fantastic score. Something I really like about the 90s, before a whole bunch of movies started using CG, is that there's a bunch of films that feel real, because they shot in real locations, because they made real props, and Super Mario Brothers really makes good use of this stuff. The environment and the world that Super Mario Brothers takes place in feels real. It feels like an actual destination that you could go to. It honestly feels like some strange place that's just completely lost and desolate, and that's exactly the kind of feel that they were going for. A lot of the visuals and practical effects are actually really cool. When you see a fireball being shot somewhere in the movie, that's a real fireball, that's not some CG effect. The movie is just loaded with a whole bunch of cool visual effects and visual designs. Just sit down and look at everything that they made. This movie doesn't feel like a cheap low budget flick. They put a lot of dedication into everything that they were doing. The third positive is that this movie has really good visuals. Okay. I'm gonna get a little heat for this one, but Super Mario Brothers the movie is very accurate to the story of the video games. Yes, okay, 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 I get it, I get it. Everyone doesn't agree with me, but the truth is that it actually is, and here's why. To start off, the brothers are saving a princess, and not just that, but they're rescuing her from a castle, which is known as Koopa Tower. The basic plot of what Super Mario Bros. the game is all about is pretty much covered right there. But the people behind this movie put way more into it. The walls and architecture in the tower are composed of blocks and triangles mimicking the look and feel of many of the levels of the Super Mario World game. The brothers eventually look exactly like they do in the game wearing their trademark green and red suits. Yoshi is in the movie and he uses his tongue as a weapon. There's shy guys, but bombs and fireballs just like from the game. And the city streets are practically littered with game references all over. In fact, most of the world is covered in a fungus due to something that King Koopa had done, causing this to become the Mushroom Kingdom. If I were to sit here and name all the references I've seen in this movie to the video game, I'd be here for probably an hour or two. But I think what makes people upset the most is that Mario isn't saving Princess Peach. Here, though, is one of the movie's most interesting and unknown facts. In the movie, Mario rescues his girlfriend Daniela, who along with a bunch of other women have been kidnapped being mistaken for Daisy. Now in the film, they only ever call her Daniela, but according to the background materials for the movie, her full name is Daniela Pauline Verducci. Daniela is actually Pauline, the woman Mario is trying to save in the original Donkey Kong. Also, Mario's corporate nemesis during some of the final scenes of the movie gets hit with a de-evolution gun that turns him into a chimp. This too is also supposed to be a reference to Donkey Kong as it basically alludes that Scapelli is the big ape. Basically, this shows you that the movie attempted to reference not only Super Mario Brothers, but also the original Donkey Kong, Mario's first appearance in a video game. This movie totally makes references to the video game. And not only that, but the film makes references in the story to other Mario video games. So, the fourth positive is that this movie has a lot to do with the Super Mario Brothers game. Super Mario Brothers the movie is a really good popcorn flick. It might not be Citizen Kane, it might not even be Gone with the Wind, but it's just a film that you can sit down and enjoy. And I understand that a lot of times nowadays, we like to demonize older, sometimes bad films just because it's fun. But this movie doesn't really deserve that. It deserves to be sat down and enjoyed just as a good story, because that's exactly what it is.